Hello guys, I hope you are doing good. Welcome to this new video. Today we are going to solve this problem where we are asked to extend the array so that it can have eventlessness and the event will be triggered whenever we are performing the push or pop action. So if you see the example over here, we will extend the array and the array will have one method called add listener that can add uh, that will take an event name and a callback function and that event will be stored. So we can have multiple callbacks for the same event name. For example, if you see these are the two events with the same name add but the callback functions are different. So here we are printing items were added, here we are printing items were added again. So the event can have multiple callbacks and all that will be invoked whenever an action is performed on the array. So let me comment this for now. We'll come back to this while testing again. Similarly, we can have different types of events. So there's an add event, then there's a remove event. Now we have to extend the basic actions also like the push and pop. And we'll create these two new methods, push with event and pop with event. So whenever a push operation we are performing, right, we'll pass the event name that has to be triggered after the operation is successful. So let's say we are adding 4 and 5 in the array. So we say that trigger the add event. Now once the 4 or 5 are added to the array, this add event will be triggered and all the callbacks that are assigned to the add event will be triggered or invoked. So here the moment 4 and 5 are added to the array, add will be invoked it will trigger the event and this callback function will be called and we will see that console.log is printed similarly if we assign the other event like this one so both the callbacks will be invoked after this operation is done and there is also a pop event so pop with event pop basically provides the latest entry from the array which was lately added so when pop with event will be triggered, we are invoking or we are triggering the remove event. So the moment an item is popped from the array, remove event will be triggered and the callback assigned with the remove will be invoked. So this will be invoked and we will see that item was removed. So if you see here in the uh, example, I have commented that 5 was removed because 5 was the latest entry from the array. So this is what we have to implement. So let's start implementing this. Now if you see because all these methods are natively available to the array right and it will be available to all the array instances. So we are going to extend the array itself and on this prototype we are going to add the new methods. So the first thing I am doing is I am creating a listeners map to hold the event and all their callbacks. Because a single event can have multiple callbacks, so I am creating a map. In the map, the key will be the event name and we will have array of callbacks. So that's why I am using this listener and then there is this prototype dot add listener method and this will accept the event name and the callback function. So here I am checking if the event is already present or not. So because we have extended the prototype, we can use the this keyword and access the listener as it is on the function on the array. Sorry. So here I am checking if the listener with the event name is already present or not. And if it is not present, then we say that use this as a key and the value will be in array or list. And to this, we'll assign the callback. So push callback. So here for any event name, we are storing all the callbacks in the form of an array so that we can invoke it whenever an action is performed. So we have the add listener. Now let's go to the events. So we have two events over here, push with the event and pop with the event. Sorry, two actions over here. So let's create those actions, array dot prototype and then push with event. So as you see, push with event, it takes event name and the values that has to be pushed. 
so here also we will accept event name and the values that has to be pushed and in the response if you see um, to the callback we are passing the event name the items on whom the operation is performed and the array itself so the first thing we'll do is we'll push the entries in the array so this will add all the entries to the array and after that we'll trigger event so trigger event event name and the values so we'll create this helper function trigger event that will help us to uh, trigger any of the event and then uh, to that callback we'll be able to pass all these three values so the push with the event is ready let's create the pop with the event too so here pop with the event and because in the pop it only accepts the event name and we have to get the latest value from the array so i'll say that this dot pop this will return as the last entry from the array and then this will pass to the trigger event now both the operations are ready now let's create this helper function trigger event so that we can invoke the events prototype dot trigger event and here in the function we get the event name and the value so now here the value can be a single value or uh, an array of value or anything else so we'll pass it as it is we don't have to worry about this now I'll go to the listeners map and check if the event name is present or not that we are asked to invoke. So if it is present, all we have to do is we have to get all the callback functions of it. So let's say callback and to this here i am using a fat arrow function so because uh, i have to access the array itself right in the uh, uh, third argument of the callback function so using the fat arrow function i can access the this directly and this will um, represent the array so if you are using the normal function then you will have to use a variable to map the this so it's better we use the fat arrow function over here and then we'll call all of the callback functions and to this the first argument is the event name itself so event name the second argument is the value and the third argument is the array itself so we are passing this so that's it i think that's the simplest implementation of this trigger event pop with the event push with the event so we have all the methods ready now let's run this and see if we are getting the desired output or not so because we have two events over here add and remove and add will be invoked whenever we are pushing so we should get this printed and the pop will be uh, sorry the remove will be triggered when we are doing a pop operation so this should be printed so let's run this and if you see if i run this both are getting printed as expected now let's undo this so here whenever a push event will be happen right so there will be two logs printed one is items were added again and the second is sorry the one is items were added and second is items were added again so both the uh, both the console logs should be printed let's run this and if you see both are being printed and that to the order in which they have been added so that's how you can extend the array and you can have the array with the event listener now there are um, so uh, you can also have another method over here to remove the listener so i leave it up to you to add that method and practice i hope you have learned something new thank you for your time